Hi, everybody. Welcome to Jenkins Boat Works. I am Chuck Jenkins. In this video, we continue work on our Soam Sound 12 and a half sailboat project. We're glad you're here. Um, things are getting kind of exciting because we're getting to a point where we're actually going to start seeing what this thing's going to look like. And today we're going to concentrate on hanging some of the frames. So we've got some of these aft frames, at least kind of temporarily set and it's going to take some careful measurement and placement and that sort of thing. So uh, we're going to show how we are at least trying to get them centered a little bit, adding some additional material on the feet so that it'll sit on the rails of the construction jig. So anyway, I uh, hope you'll enjoy this. We're glad you're here. If you are new to the channel, welcome. And if you've been looking for a boat building project, hopefully this is it. This will be a long project um, because it should take two years. <laughs> anyway, we, we already have a number of episodes, I think 14, uh, and uh, they are in a playlist that we will link at the end of the video and also um, in the description. So we're glad you're here. Uh, let's jump in and see if we can hang some frames. So we are in the process of trying to set some frames. And at least for the moment, I've got 14, 12, and 10 here set pretty well where I think they need to go. So I'm working on the eight foot frame as we move forward. And so these are very symmetrical because as you may remember, when we made the frames, we cut these out with the boards screwed together so each side was cut all at once uh, and they should be perfectly symmetrical now our inside width from side beam to side beam here is four feet and so this frame is clearly wider than four feet and so the bottoms of these will not sit on the frame so what you have to do is put some pieces on here uh, that it can then rest on. But that's a little tricky because uh, number one, you need to make sure that they are very smooth and matched up with these feet so that you're not creating some variance in height. Like if this was at an angle and not perfectly straight on there, then because it's going to rest on that frame probably right about here. So that would, that would mess that up. So one of the things I'm doing is I'm taking this big long ruler and I'm running it along there and making sure that that's straight. And so both of them in relation to each other are straight. The other thing is we got to put this piece in and this is what helps it be secured to this a center beam up here and this center beam so like here's the mark where this next frame is going to go and I've got it marked off down here as well and I even have a block in here uh, that it should butt up against but I'm not sure that's exactly in the right place obviously we can change or adjust it so anyway from from this base if you just had a, a, a flat plane going across side to side from there going straight up to here is 25 inches. And we were very careful to make sure that that's uniform uh, front to back. So these cross pieces then here have to be 25 inches vertically from the construction jig baseline. So I put this one in here last night, but I didn't have these, I didn't have these feet on here yet. So what I'm worrying about is, does that still work? So I'm gonna uh, put my ruler right on the edge there and come up here. Now what I see is that we're a little bit short on this side. I'm gonna have to move this up this way, just a hair. How are we on the other side? I want that right on that edge and we come up and on this one, you can see that we're very close to the 25 inch mark. So 
uh, we will get this screwed down and we may have to play with it. That last frame we did, number uh, 10, I had a devil of a time getting that cross piece situated, but it doesn't have to be perfect because we put these little blocks in here on this, on this rail. And there's one there in the back and one in the front. And then they're just spaced so that this just sits in here. So it doesn't have to set perfectly on there. It'd be nice if it was pretty tight. So that's what we're up to. We're gonna run a couple of screws in here, readjust this, and then we'll go try to test fit it and see if we can get it to uh, set on the jig correctly. Okay, so I'm using a clamp to hold this down here just so it won't move around on me while I'm drilling these. And I am pre-drilling these, so they're not going all over the place, and I'm countersinking them. Get this one on the on the edge here, in here, then I can double check and make sure I'm still flush down here. That feels really good. So let's put another screw in there. So what I was doing, I needed to figure out how big these needed to be so that they would sit in at least to get us on the rail in that four foot span in between here. So I measured this with this great big ruler and, and I was 71 and one quarter inches, 71 and one quarter inches. So I was almost the full six feet of this ruler. So I took the 71 and a quarter and I subtracted 48 inches, because that would be four feet. And that left me hanging out over the rails, like these things won't set down on them, by 23 and a quarter inches. So then I divided the 23 and a quarter because I wanna know how big these have to be in order to create four feet in the middle of this. So I took that, divided by two, and it was 11 and 5 eighths. So not quite a foot. Well, I had a little board here that was 26 inches. I cut it in half, so I got about 13 inches for these pieces, for these feet. So I know that at uh, 11 and 5 eighths, so if I just measure from this edge over 11 and 5 eighths, I can make a mark right there and do the same thing over there. That then in turn should mean that those are exactly four feet apart, those marks. So let's see how we're doing. I like to put a little wood or something in here so those we don't get a, a false reading. Now I'm going to match this up right with the end of this, just like that. So I know that's okay. And then I come back over here, and here is... 48 inches. So I've got about two inches and probably close to five eighths uh, extra to work with. So if I divide that by two, I can come in there and put, well, I figured out if I mark it at 11 and five eighths, which was the number we already had from this edge and 11 and five eighths from this edge in and make a mark and I put that ruler on there now I've got a mark here it's about an inch and a half back from here same thing over here and it's right on 48 inches so I know that this is gonna sit and, and I'll make this mark and then that's where I set it on the frame on the on the jig over here I'm gonna have two lines on here and those are gonna match right up inside those rails And boy, it's just right on there. So that's one way that we're gonna be able to make sure that it's right from side to side. Okay, so I just ran into something else. When I made these molds, my pattern was all about this outside edge. I didn't care much what was going on on the inside edges. So I, I know where my plank lines are, my shear line, everything was all about this outside edge. 
When I put these boards on here and tried to make them flush with the, the feet down here and then put the ruler on here, they were, they were tilted up, which means if I would have set them on the jig, this would have been higher than it was supposed to be. Now I've got this ruler clamped down on here so that it's exactly straight with that one. And there's just the slightest little bit of this hanging over this foot on this edge. So I don't care about that because it's perfectly flush on this edge and it is on the other side up there. So I just wanna make sure that these are directly in line with each other. This has, they have to be in line with each other in order to sit on the jig right. And again, I can feel just a little bit of a lip down in here too. So I've got them adjusted. I'm gonna just drill new holes because if I would happen to hit that other pre-drilled hole, it would try to pull that back up. And we, we don't want that. So it doesn't much matter where these are. I'm probably gonna put another one in here anyway. All right. The other thing I could have done is I may have thrown off my 25 inch mark up to here. That one is about 25 and a 16th. <coughs> this one is the same. So I'm okay with that. It's gonna, it's gonna sit on that rail just fine. So I'm gonna put two more screws in here and here and there and then we'll go, go try to hang it. Okay, we're gonna try to hang this eight foot frame on the jig. And uh, wish me luck because you're watching this live. I haven't done this yet. You just watched me get all the measurements and the little pieces of wood affixed to it. And uh, this one was a real pain in the butt last night. I monkeyed with it and monkeyed with it before I finally got it. So we're gonna pray that this one goes a little better. Oh, I still want to mark my four foot line on those feet. Okay, so which way is it supposed to mount on here? I believe these gussets are supposed to face forward. So. Okay, so far so good. The feet are pretty much resting on there. Well, it's hanging up on this. It's like this is too, too high, but it's really close. It wants to rock just a little bit. I'm going to clamp this down a little bit. This is by no means where it goes, but we're close. I do have my lines on these feet to where I can mark the, pretty much make sure it's centered, knowing that I've got four feet in between there. Now this, this is not right because this part actually needs to be up against the face of this. So I'm too far forward. I'm going to have to move this back the width of, of this board. So we'll move it back and then that'll put the face of this right here. I don't know why I couldn't put that block behind here. The plan shows it being in front, but I don't know what difference it makes. So I'm going to adjust this just a little bit so it's not riding high on. My marks on my feet aren't matching up exactly right. That's slightly inside there by almost quarter inch. Let's see what it's like on the other side. That one's pretty much lined up. So we're gonna make sure that it really truly is exactly four feet in between at this point. That's the first thing to check. I am gonna raise this up. It's just resting too hard on, on this center beam. But that's how we monkey with it. 
There's other things I've done, like I, I've got a center line drawn down here, a center line here. Now this is lining up pretty good on this center beam, but I'm not trusting that the center beam's in the middle. It was just too hard to get it mounted with these diagonals. And it doesn't matter if it isn't perfectly uh, centered, but we need to make sure that we remember that it's not centered exactly right. But boy, look at that. Now see if that's about where that frame's gonna go. Now we're starting to see some shape here as to what this thing's gonna look like, which is super cool. So I'll, I'll monkey with a little bit adjust those little blocks, put some blocks up on the top for that cross piece to be locked into, kind of like we did with, with this here. So that's how we get it set up. Now, I'm also gonna be worrying here pretty soon. I haven't screwed any of these down or these blocks. So in other words, I can still move these because I'm not, 100% sure that this shear line is exactly level with the shear line on the other side. I think it should be extremely close, but I am likely gonna use the water level again just to make sure that my frames are setting on here uh, just right. It sure looks like it's pretty straight. John also suggests, John Brooks also suggests drilling a hole through the center of these frames and then running a string through the frames once they're set up just to make sure that you're all lined up and that the string shouldn't touch anything if the holes are, are perfectly centered in each frame, which is another good way of making sure that it's sitting on the jig and equidistant, you know, port to starboard. So it's pretty fun setting it up because especially when you get to see something like this where you see what, what that shape's going to start to look like. I'm going to start working on getting the little... Um, stand together back here for the transom to sit on. That's going to be super cool once we get the transom on there because that's really going to give us an idea what the back end of the boat's going to look like. All right, more as we get more done. If you like the video, remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.